Hi, my name is Seth Ladd. I'm a developer advocate with the Dart team here at Google, and I want to show you something totally awesome about debugging Dart web apps using the Dart editor. Now first, the setup. Dart is a structured web programming language, and we ship a great library called WebUI. Now WebUI allows you to build on top of brand new platform features like web components and sprinkle in a little bit of dynamic, live, two-way data binding. So all the great uh, features you need to build a modern client-side web app. Now, we're able to compile down the modern new features like custom components, here's a custom component right here, down into vanilla JavaScript and HTML so you can write with modern platform features today and yet run on all modern browsers even if they don't have Dart and even if they don't understand web components. And we do this with a Dart web compiler. So I want to show first, here is the code that you would normally write, here's some Dart code that you would normally write. Our compiler then takes it all and generates the regular non-web component code such as this. So this is what your browser is actually running, but this is what you get to write, or something like this. So very cool. So let's show you this application running here. I'm going to right click and run in Dartium. Dartium is a build of Chromium with a Dart virtual machine here. Okay, everything's working. You're very simple to do application. Now, remember that this, this browser, all the browsers you deploy to are actually running the code from the out directory. This is the actual code that we need to generate to take the modern features like custom components like this so that they can run uh, out in the wild uh, even if those browsers don't support these new versions. Now, this is all fine and good until, of course, there's some sort of error. Now, what happens if there's an error? So let's introduce, uh, let's just say a misspelling here. Now this is the class that backs the custom element or the custom component. We're going to artificially introduce some bug here. Now already the editor and the build system has rebuilt all the code here and out. So we now have a broken version ready to go. So let's load up the broken version. First cool thing here, we can actually run the original HTML file because the Dart editor understands that it's actually mapped over to this file here and out. But of course, this is the generated one. It's got machine generated code in there. We don't want to mess with that. So let's run the code that uh, we're familiar with. Launches it directly into Dartium again. Let's do the same thing. Now, I messed up the toggle method. So if I toggle this here, there should be an error. So let's go ahead and toggle that. Boom. Okay, cool thing number two is the editor now pops up immediately at the exact problem. No such method. We can drill down in the call stack here due to the great debugger that's embedded in the editor, which is talking back to the Dart virtual machine that's in that. It's over here in this Chromium build. Uh, and what is it showing me? Well, it's showing me that in the original code, that is the code that you are working in, that line seven here has an error. Of course, it's... Uh, toggle instead of toggle. In fact, you can see it here. Class to do item has no instance method toggle. Now, of course, this is correct. We messed up the spelling on purpose. But what's happening here? Well, it's able to map the original line with the error, that is this line right here in the original code that you write, and map it back into the generated code, the code that the browser is actually running. Now remember, the browser runs all this generated code here for you. So how did my editor know that the problem's actually here? Well, this is due to a very cool feature called source maps. Source maps here is, it's another machine gener generated file here, you can see here, that uh, essentially tells either the editor or Chrome Dev Tools to map from original source code to generated source code. So for instance, line one in my original code is line 12 in generated code, and line two in my original code is line 47 in generated code. Now this is a generic mechanism that, say, the SAS compiler supports for CSS compilation, or I believe there's a CoffeeScript source maps compiler, Clojure compiler does this, GWT compiler does this, and of course uh, the Dart to JS compiler does this, and our web UI compiler which turns your awesome modern uh, web apps that use web components into vanilla JavaScript and HTML and Dart code. 
That also generates these source maps, which is this file here. And then Dart Editor understands these source maps, which is why that the Dart Editor is able to actually map uh, from the generated code here back over to the actual original code where the error really is. Now, I as a developer, of course, want to see this right here. I don't, don't tell me where the error is over in the out directory. That's generated code that I'm going to ship to production that I don't want to have to look at because it might be minified or obfuscated or just generated for a machine by a machine. Thanks to source maps, the editor and its debugger and Chromium all can point me as a developer to the actual line of the error uh, right where I can fix it, save the file again, go back over to our build of Chromium, I'm going to reload my app, and of course it works. And you also just saw how fast that re recompiling is. In the time it takes me to go back over to my app and reload the app, the Dart web compiler has regenerated all the code inside of out, and of course, regenerate the correct code, no errors. So thanks for watching. This is very cool. You can get Dart uh, Editor and learn more about Dart at dartlang.org. Thanks a lot.